Hi, welcome to Water Filter Systems 101 for how to build a water filter from the Winfield ceramic filter. This is a ceramic shell and a carbon center, uh, activated charcoal center. Uh, it has a nut on the back here, it sometimes comes with one or two grommets. This is the 4 inch, the 4 by 4 inch um, unit. And all of the links you'll need or web, uh, email addresses to get these items uh, you'll find on the page there, uh, the links on the YouTube page. So you'll need one of these filters per system. Uh, you'll also need a valve. This is a Made in USA one. Uh, I have found other options, but this is the one I found that lasts the longest and hold up the best in the conditions we put it in. Uh, one thing to notice is that the uh, grommets, the rubbers are beveled on these. One edge is beveled and the other edge is flat. Uh, the beveled edge will always go against the sidewall of the bucket. Like so. The bucket would come in between here, like so. All right, so these are items that we need to install the filter with. Uh, also a lid, one lid, and two buckets. Items that you'll need for tools are some form of three quarter inch drill bit. I like the step bits because they tend to destroy the bucket less and shatter out the plastic less. Um, a drill of some kind to perforate the holes with. First hole uh, we'll show you is a three quarter inch hole. This is for the valve. It goes through the base of this bucket, uh, through the sidewall toward the base. Uh, you'll notice that the bucket does have a rim right here around it. That is the, the bottom of the bucket on the inside. And you need to be at least a half inch above that with your three-quarter inch hole. Okay, that way you have a lip on the inside edge of the bucket here um, so that you have somewhere for the neck of the filters or the neck of the valves uh, nut to spin on the back with. Otherwise, you don't have enough space to spin the nut. We tighten these down only by hand. These are only hand tightened. Good. So once you tighten down the nut real well, there's one more hole that needs to go in this bucket, and it would go up toward the upper edge of it, right here in the side wall, about an inch down, about one inch down from the from the lip, from the rim. Same on both sides. This is to give ventilation to the system so that the water can escape and air can come in or so that water can come in and air can go out. So that, that finishes the lower bucket. Those are all the holes that need to be drilled in it. Basically three holes, two here on the top, small holes, and then really don't matter the size exactly, just small. And here a three quarter inch hole for the valve that will give us flow for draining the water that has been filtered from the lower bucket. And that finishes the lower bucket. Okay, so for the upper bucket, we're going to need to drill a half inch hole through the floor of the bucket. We want to stay as centered as possible, right in the center of the, of the bucket.
need the space centered will be found later on when we are putting in the neck of the filter into this hole. And if the two holes, the one from the lid in the center of the lid and this hole don't line up perfectly right in the center, then the neck of the filter will sit crooked in the base of the bucket and you'll end up with uh, a leak, pop, a potential leak. So this hole, same thing, half inch hole. Again, I'm using step bits. These are very useful and don't break the bucket. Other options are spade bits or wing bits, another name for them. Uh, also, you can use, just use standard uh, drill bits. Only trouble with a standard drill bit is it's really hard to find in three quarter inch. It's uh, kind of a specialty size, so it's a lot more expensive. Uh, I get these spade bits off of Amazon for $15 for a kit of three. So Now we take the filter with the grommet on it, on the neck of the filter here, and we're going to place it through the hole in the bottom of the bucket and through the hole in the lid. I'm spinning it through, I'm threading it through that hole. A little bit of pressure is required. You do have to push to get the neck of the filter through. And then usually I put this one through first, through the bucket first, and then put the lid on and spin it down onto it. This gives you the best seal without stripping out the threads. Um, I'm not spinning the inside right now. The, the filter, I'm not spinning it. So uh, the threads are remaining uh, intact that I just placed into the base of the bucket. The threading happened and is now uh, helping us with the seal. When we tighten this on, it's important not to over tighten the nut. A lot of people do. It will eventually break the bottom of the bucket if you've over tightened the nut here because it's tensioning the base of the bucket and the lid together and giving them a lot of flex and that flex will eventually break the base of the bucket. So uh, you'll, when you know that that's happened, you'll see leaking water coming from this area here. So uh, we tighten the, the nut down until the threads just start to peek through right here on the, on the neck of the filter. And then we also check here on the inside of the bucket the space, the gap between the base of the filter and the floor of the bucket, that gap should be even all the way around. It should be about the width of the, that grommet that was in there. Uh, that grommet is the spacer that's sealing that space, uh, that, that opening, and it should be even all the way around and not be crooked. If it's crooked on one side, then that means the holes were not drilled in the center, and the neck is twisting, and it's lifting up one side, and it could give you a leak there. So something to avoid. So that's how to put together the filter. Uh, next we'll cover how to sterilize it and prepare it for installation. Okay so step number three on the filter installation. We've built the lower bucket with its valve and uh, its ventilation holes in the sides. We've built the upper bucket with its filter and uh, lid to rest on top of this one on the lower bucket width. Um, and now we need to sterilize all the surfaces of the lower bucket. We start with that by simply washing the uh, lower bucket parts, that would be the lid of it and its inside area, uh, with just simple water in the village, whatever um, material that's left over from the drilling, uh, bits of hair or dirt or dust will get washed out at this point. Um, doesn't have to be real thorough, just needs to be to get the major bulk of the junk out. Uh, next we would get some Clorox. This is Chlorolex, this is here in Mexico that we use. We would pour about a cup or half a cup into this bottle, into the bucket, uh, using um, about a half, one half mix. So a half cup of Chlorolex to uh, half a cup of um, water. 
So the dilution is a one-to-one. -one. Um, it just gives you more material to work with to have the dilution, but is not absolutely necessary. Okay, get that on you. So now we've filled this, or uh, we've placed Clorox with diluted water uh, in the in the lower bucket. We're going to clean it really well. Uh, we'd want to get any of the junk out that we see as we go, uh, making sure that we clean the sides all the way up to the rim. Uh, the lower part, I usually open the, the valve and release a little bit of water through it just to make sure the internal workings of the valve have been cleaned out. Um, get this bucket really clean. Once you've cleaned it and you pour the Clorox out, do not put your hand back in there. Anything else that goes in here is contaminating it. You don't need to rinse it. You don't need to place anything else in it. Uh, if you want to rinse it out, you could rinse it out with alcohol or oxygenated water, hydrogen peroxide. Um, those are really the only two options that will keep it sterile and remove the flavor of the Clorox to something to rinse it with. Uh, step number two on the Clorox is to Clorox the lid. You need to get the, all the surfaces of the lid clean, the interior surfaces. So again, we would pour a small amount of Clorox uh, onto the lid area here and then the same amount of water onto the lid, being very careful not to allow any water down into uh, or any Clorox rather, down into the inside of the filter. Uh, the interior of the filter has the uh, carbon, the activated charcoal in it, and it would just give you problems with the flavor. It would absorb the flavor of the Clorox and could leach that flavor back into the water. So better to keep any Clorox out of there. You get this whole area really clean down in all the cracks and crevices. Uh, again, just get it rinsed, any area around here, but not inside of the filter. Pour that off and then let it air dry a little bit. You could rinse it with, uh, with alcohol or hydrogen peroxide if you choose. Once those two steps have been done, you're ready to install the filter by just snapping these two together, the lid and the lower bucket. Um, if you choose to do this, uh, it will make it a little bit more difficult to clean the lower bucket later on, um, you know, every six months or three months or so. You want to clear the algae out and kind of the, just the general slime that builds up from water, any water, even clean water, that sits for any amount of time. Um, so it's, it's nice to be able to clean them out, and so sometimes people don't snap this down. The disadvantage of not snapping these down and connecting them together is that you uh, run the risk of having a contamination of the lower bucket or of the top bucket falling off with the weight of the water being placed in it here makes it top heavy and it could fall off and break. So um, it's your choice. You can snap the lid down or not. Uh, in new homes where they haven't had an installation previously, I usually snap the lid down. Uh, one of the major instructions that you give the family once you've installed the filter is that they should not for any reason place any form of Clorox, soap, chemical, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, anything in this bucket with the filter. They can clean the lower bucket all they want with any chemical they want to to clean the bucket out, but they should not use any form of chemical to clean the filter. Uh, just water, two or three liters is usually enough at a time. Splash it around in there uh, and then either pour it off or scoop it back out with a cup to get all that muddy water that's collected uh, out of this area. I usually rinse it two or three times and that's enough to, to clean it. Um, there's Depending on the turbidity of the water, there's different estimates as to how often they need to clean it. Um, usually I tell them every two to three uses, so that would be every two to three times that you use 20 liters of water that you fill this up, you need to go ahead and rinse it out and get the junk out of it. Uh, totally depends on the turbidity though. If, there's a, if you're getting it out of a river or out of a lake or a creek, something that's really dirty with a lot of floaties in it, then you're going to want to clean it far more often. I think that's everything I need to tell you. Thank you for spending some time learning how to make filters. Good day.